around 50 degrees in a no wind situation is the best, I believe. Uh, uh, overcast day is going to make it cooler than it normally would. If it's sunny, the better, you know. But what we don't want to do when we go in is uh, disturb them enough. If it's if it's too cool and they're still in a tight cluster, we won't don't want to disturb them so much that they break the cluster uh, to take care of me that's intruding on them, and they have to put all the energy and and. Uh, effort back into reforming the cluster and heating and doing that again after we've, we've opened it up and stressed them out. And, and that they used a lot more food that way and that's not what we're after. We just wanna make sure we can do an inspection, get in and out without stressing the bees as much as possible. So I always have a little weight on top of my colonies. And when you do move your, your outer cover and your weights or whatever, move them away where you won't step on them and fall on them and hurt yourself. <clears throat> I've already smoked the entrance. I'll do it again. <clears throat> we'll move it along here. I'm gonna sit here and observe. <clears throat> Most of my observations have noted the bees are bringing in a, a light yellow to a uh, orange type pollen. And when they're flying like this on a day like today and they're bringing in food, it's not gonna be a big problem to go in here and inspect. If I come out here and there's a few flying around, they're not bringing in pollen, they're more or less taking cleansing flights, I'm gonna be very cautious about what I'm gonna do in here because I don't wanna break up the cluster. I don't wanna get in there too early. So we'll take the outer cover off. Put a little smoke here on them, down in the frames. What I'm gonna look for is brood. I'm gonna look and see if uh, it's okay for me to rotate the boxes. If the cluster is all the way up in the, the top box or if they really move throughout the hive, throughout the boxes, then I'll be able to rotate the boxes. I wanna rotate the empty frames up and the brood frames down. That That's, that's my, uh, goal when I do this. Okay, here we've opened it up. I told Matt when I when we were talking about this earlier that the bees were going to be on the south side of the box. And if you can see here, that's exactly where they are. And the reason they're here, they're taking advantage of the warmth for being facing south. And if you can see right here, just about all of the bees in the box right now are over here. So this is probably where the brood's gonna be and this is where the queen's gonna be. As I go through here, if we see partially drawn comb, I'm gonna to try to put that between frames of brood in order to get them to draw the comb because the flow is about to start. That's the best time for bees to draw. And it's very, very expensive for honeybees to draw comb. It takes, uh, one honeybee produces four to six drops of honey in its lifetime, and it takes uh, uh, six to nine pounds of uh, honey to draw one pound of wax. So that should tell you how expensive wax is to them. So we, we wanna be careful when we're doing this. And if I pull these out, this is a darker frame. I'm gonna keep an eye on this. They are already storing nectar in it. That's a good sign right there. I keep an eye on darker frames to whether I need to move them out in my, my comb rotation. If, this, uh, if they weren't storing in here, if there was mold around here or something to indicate this, this frame or this comb was too old, I would, I would phase it out and replace it with some foundation or maybe even some uh, new comb drawing comb from a dead out that I might have. We're gonna take this and I'm putting this down out of the way so I can move these back and check them one frame at a time. We can see this, this one here has, has uh, they've started to put nectar in it and you can see them feeding right here. That's what they're doing. These bees are, it could be adult bees, they, uh, are foragers, but they're likely feeding the foragers as the foragers come and go. That's what these bees are getting their nectar, are getting the nectar for right now. This side has nothing on it yet. That's okay. We'll move this back over here. And as I'm going through, I'm looking down in here to see how they're looking in the bottom 
there's quite a few bees down there, which is a good sign. That means the cluster is probably broken and moving around fairly well. Here's a frame that's partially drawn. Around on this side, we're going to look. Once again, the bees can care less about me right now. They're feeding. Out here, we have uh, pollen of different colors. There's red, yellow, and most of it has a glisten to it, which means they've already turned it into bee bread. They put an enzyme in there that ferments it and it, it makes it last longer. And this looks pretty good. There is some spotted brood around here. I did move these boxes a few weeks ago, so that's probably what this is about. But since this frame is, this side of this frame is, is mostly drawn and this one is not, I'm gonna turn this side around and face it to where the bees are working. So as the, the brood area moves this way, we'll have more bees and they'll, uh, they'll draw out this, this side of this, this uh, frame. This one is the same way. And you can see as I'm progressing towards the south side here, we're getting more bees, more food is being stored. So we'll put this back in. We're gonna look at another one. And I've got a queen catcher here with me. If I come upon the queen, I'm gonna put her in here and put her in my pocket so I can take her out, injuring her out of the equation. I don't wanna injure her. Just about any time of the year, if you kill the queen, you've got a lot of problems ahead of you replacing her. This frame here now has it's got more bees and more nectar. It's all nectar, I don't see any pollen, I mean any uh, uh, honey yet. If I shake this, it would likely come out. It'd be, and it's not uh, cured or dried yet. We're gonna go all the way to the end, then we're gonna go into the bottom box and look down there. Here's another partially drawn, and you can see they're starting to work on this. I don't see any festooning. When bees are drawing comb, and this tells me there's not a major flow on yet. They're finding nectar out there, but when the major flow starts, they'll start festooning and hanging from each other. And that's when they're drawing comb. And they're, they're, these bees on the bottom of the, the uh, festooning bees will be pulling wax cells out and producing it, pulling them off their abdomens and passing them up to the bees who chew on it and manipulate it and add saliva to it and make wax out of it for the comb. So that's a good sign there's more on this side. And the way we can tell if the flow was on, this is kind of a, a off-colored wax. Uh, the white wax, the pure white wax, means they have discovered a, a nectar source. Okay, here is the next frame. This is nothing but uh, foundation. And I put this in the other day and I normally, I'm not, don't, normally don't pull these apart, but I'm going to because I want to show you how the bees have started to draw this. They were connecting and hanging on to these other bees right here, and you can see they're starting to make comb here. I use plastic foundation. I paint it with pheromone-laden wax that I get from my wax melter, out of my uh, solar wax melter. And these bees here are working hard to make this into a brood area. And this was a frame on this side, they haven't started it all on it. And this uh, foundation right here, I put this in about a week ago. There was two frames of brood and I put this between the frames of brood. You don't want to do that too early. If the cluster is not broken, you definitely don't want to do that. You leave it alone until they start drawing or bringing in nectar. This frame has got some weight to it. It's got lots of bees on it. Maybe we'll see nectar and brood, which is what we got. We'll look on this side. Oh yeah, look at this. This is all brood. If we're having a problem with congestion and the bees are, are wanting to start a swarm sequence, they're normally gonna build the queen cells down here, the swarm cells. I don't see any yet. And the reason they do that, they build the swarm cells, they wanna build it in as middle of the brood area as possible so they can take ideal care of them and keep them temperature regulated. Thermal regulation works best like that. And I look down here and I see lots of bees below it. So likely we've got brood in the bottom box in this area too. We'll find out in a little while. 
I haven't seen the queen. I wouldn't expect the queen to be here. There's really nothing for her to do here. We do have inter interspersed backfilling going on. That's not a big deal right now. There, if this was a couple of weeks from now and I saw this, I would likely see queen cells down here. So I would either have to do a split, make an increase, or take some type of swarm prevention. And I'm gonna rearrange some frames above the brood area where we've got open comb where they can move that nectar up there. No queen cells. Oh, here we go, we've got lots of more likely, I'd say the queen is in the box below this area right here. We're going to look down here in a minute, but I'm going to move these bees out of the way. All this larva in here. These are all nurse bees around here. I'm still looking for the queen. I don't see enough open comb on here, but as the larva from the capped, the pupa, and the larva is bigger in this area and it gets smaller and younger and it gets out here toward the edge where it's only a few days old. And that's the way the queen will work. She'll lay here in the middle and start working out. And the bees out here, we've got pollen on the outside edge and they'll store pollen and nectar around the brood area to help feed the brood and the, the nurse bees. This one has got nectar on the outside of it. And in here, we've got pollen. And that's common, that's where they like to store pollen. Pollen is the protein for the babies. That's what they need to produce strong brood and good bees. So they'll store pollen in close to the brood area. Okay, we're gonna put these back, move them back over here, and I'll put the frames back in, and then we're gonna take the box off and go into the bottom. I'm starting to get bees in my face which tells me I need to add a little smoke. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, since the brood area is expanding and I've got it blocked right there with a frame of foundation and they're drawing it, I'm gonna split these two frames of brood right here and put this frame of comb that I took out first in between. Give the area a queen to come back up here and lay eggs in here in, in an area for them to, st to store nectar and pollen. Okay, we're all set with that. I'm gonna get the outer cover and move it back over here and I'm gonna set this box down on the outer cover over here, caddy corner, so I don't squash any bees underneath. I'm gonna smoke a little bit here, smoke a little bit down here, and as I break the boxes loose, I'm gonna smoke in between. The roar picks up, the bees make a little more noise. We'll wait a few minutes, uh, seconds and let them settle down a little bit, then I'll move the box over here. This is burr comb in between. We're gonna scrape that off. And the color tells me that they still have not got any nectar. It's a dark, they reused honey that's in here, old food to, to build this comb. That's why it's what color it is. Put these over here. I won't leave these laying around. I'll put it over here where I can clean it up when I'm done with the inspection. Even though it's uh, early spring and bees are not really super protective come early spring, uh, but if you leave comb out that maybe has a little nectar on it, or it can even attract varmints like raccoons and skunks. But if you leave comb out that's got a little nectar on it, some of these other colonies around here will discover this and probably come in here and see if they can take a little nectar out of here. And what will happen is this smaller colony, all the others are, are quite larger than this one and they've already got honey supers on them. This colony right here could uh, become a food source. And it won't matter while the flow's going on. But once the flow stops and the dearth hits, it'll become a major food source. And more scout bees and foragers that were out uh, harvesting nectar will take this up as a food source and they may rob it out completely and kill the queen. It's kind of a snowball situation. The bees remember where the food is 
and they have floral fidelity and they will work a source until it's gone. And I've recognized now too, down here, we've got like four frames of bees in that top box. Down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. So I'm not gonna rotate the boxes. They've already moved back down and we've got uh, fewer frames on top than we do the bottom. And me moving that empty frame of comb over there uh, should work to help them start uh, expanding the brood and slow down any type of uh, uh, swarming instincts or triggers. Once the swarming triggers are pulled, it's very, very difficult to stop them. Here we got some more nectar. Very first frame. This doesn't have any on this side, so I'm gonna turn it around this way. Let them start storing more here. Here's more nectar. By the way, most of my bees are Russian type bees and people talk about aggressiveness. And you can see these bees aren't really aggressive at all right now. These bees hanging down here are drawing comb. That's what they're doing. We've got starting to get into a brood pattern here. I'm gonna look for more bees, gonna start looking for the queen again. Blow on them a little bit to see what we've got down here. We got some very, very young larvae down in here. It's kind of an overcast. Ah, there's some eggs. Now that looks good. I like seeing eggs because now I'm sure we got a queen. I did a flash treatment a few days ago and I didn't want to have queen issues and now I'm assured I don't. That was some fresh eggs standing on end. So we're getting closer. Maybe we'll find the queen here. And you can see how the number of bees start to increase because we're on the, getting towards the, the south end of the box. Oh, all kinds of eggs in here, getting closer. I don't know if this queen is marked or not. Sometimes I mark them, sometimes I don't. If I graft out of them, this is what I like to see. This is completely covered with brood. And the way we can think about this is one bee covers three cells. Uh, the body length of one bee covers three cells. So as far as adult bees go, when all these bees emerge, this side here uh, will equal like a, a one and a half sides or, or one and a half frames of bees is what it'll do. So that'll give you an idea of when to, you need to increase for room and make sure they got enough room. These bees are doing very well. This would be a good colony to mark down and do a split with actually. There's another frame with brood. It's got pollen. And I gently blow on the bees. They don't like carbon dioxide and they'll move out of the way and that allows me to look down in there. And I say the word gently. You can get them upset if you blow too hard. And this side here is cap brood, just about capped on here, on just the entire side. So we've got several frames of bees that are going to emerge here within a few days more than likely. It takes 21 days for a uh, worker bee to go from egg to adult, 24 for a drone and 16 for a queen. getting quiet here because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting close to the queen. Down on the bottom, the, I'm not going to remove this right now, 
we see chunks of comb down there with brood in it and that is grown comb. I've seen very little grown comb interspersed with the brood, with the worker brood. Right here we've got a bee with red pollen on it. Oh, actually it's, it's propolis, it's, it sure is. I don't know where it's getting at this time of year. They usually get propolis from uh, coniferous trees. But the queen will lay the drone brood away from the, the uh, or the workers set it up so the queen lays the drone brood away from the, the worker brood. They need a little bit cooler temperature to mature than the worker brood does. Whether I see the queen or not is not going to matter to me today since I've seen so many eggs. Here's another frame of cat brood. Lots of bees. And I've just made the decision that I'm going to go back this afternoon because we're having several days of cold weather and put some honey supers on this colony. Let them start moving the nectar up. And since there's so many bees on here, what I might do before I put the top box back on here, I'm gonna, as I go through, instead of just pushing the frames over, I'm gonna pick them up one at a time and put them back in and look again for the queen. Sometimes when you go through the first time and you've smoked or whatever, she'll get a little leery and she'll play run around. She'll run around from one side of the frame to the other as you look for. And when you go back through there, if you're really gentle and move things nice and slow, you can spot her. And this is really nice looking representation. This is all brood right here and out here we've got pollen and pollen, bands of pollen. Then right here on the edge, we've got the, the carbohydrates of, of nectar. This is what you're looking for. I've seen no disease. All the larvae look just as healthy and shiny and glistening. If your larva is uh, off colored, and especially the royal jelly down in there, the royal jelly will look white and clear. And that's what you want. If it's got any type of a yellow tint or off color to it, then you might be having a problem. You may have European fowl brood. Uh, there are other diseases caused in the spring that will cause the larvae to die like that. And the queen's not gonna be here. This, this frame is entirely pollen, both sides, solid pollen. This is what they need to raise their babies. So as we go back through, I'm gonna replace them one at a time. Like I said, if I don't see the queen, I'm not worried. It could be there's a, uh, the entire south wall here is covered with bees. She could be on over there. She does take a break every now and then. She doesn't lay consistently all day long. All the bees will take a break at one time or another. But you see, I'm being gentle with these. I'm moving it out into the space and moving it up slow. I don't want to roll any bees. And when I'm looking down on the bees, if I see the queen, more than likely what I'm going to spot first is her abdomen. It really stands out. She's so, her abdomen is so much bigger than these other bees, and she's always looking for a place to lay another egg if she's not laying an egg. If I didn't see the queen and didn't see eggs, but I saw larva, I would start looking for queen cells. And that would indicate to me if I saw queen cells that they, they had lost the queen and they're trying to start a new one. About the only option you have this time of year if you can't find one and they're normally not ready, even in the south, to replace the queen with is to let them start one of their own and. Hopefully that they'll come back, but it'll really set them back on their honey flow. Still no queen, but the more bees there are, the more difficult it is to spot her. Sometimes I think I'm a good queen spotter and other times I think I'm terrible. No queen on this side either. I'm not going, I'm gonna go ahead and close this 
push this back over and get them closed. They're starting to get stressed out. And this one, I'm going to pry it apart and go into this area here where we had lots of brood and pollen. We're going to put this in here and let them draw it out, give them some work to do. That's one thing that starts the swarm sequence is bees just kind of hanging around with nothing to do. You can see the, the wall of foragers that are popping up back here. Pretty amazing. I'm going to try to smoke as many bees down in there as possible. I don't want to squash them. Then I'm going to go under this box and put a little smoke under here so Sometimes when it's sitting like that, bees will gather on the bottoms of the frame and when you set it back on, you can squash some or even squash the queen. Okay, we didn't have to rotate the brood boxes. I normally do that, some people don't, and the reason I do is because I want as much empty space above the bottom space before I put my honey supers on. And I will come back in after a while and I'm gonna put some honey supers on here. Now my honey supers have been pickled for the winter. Two weeks ago I took them out. I treat them with paradichlorobenzene. Some people put them in a freezer. Any way you do it, you need to get them out and stack them caddy corner and let the air get to them for a week or two. There's rarely wax moths this time of year. You don't really have to worry about that as much. What we'll do next is we're gonna uh, find colonies similar to this one that have even more bees in it and we're gonna do making an increase, probably a nuke or two. That's the best way to uh, ease congestion is to take a nuke box, take three frames of brood out of a real strong hive, make sure you don't get the queen, put them in a nuke, put them with some food, uh, have one of the frames of brood with eggs on it so they can start a queen and go from there.